welcome and good evening david yes how are you Raphael? <laughs> thank you i'm doing fine i hope you're doing good as well yeah i'm okay the last video um, um seems interesting uh, many interesting comments Indeed. surprising comments it seems like there seems to be a war between um two groups yeah you mentioned it too. in, in the it comments said... did you notice this well definitely i noticed there were some let's say controversial comments let's say or some discussion going on or maybe some confusion uh, we'll see more like a battle <laughs> between two groups like um I wouldn't call this um, exactly a discussion. Um, um, there seems to be a fight between somebody um, known as the Toilet Boy and um, other members of the public. Yes, um, something to do with... Um, ah, here. Yes, um, this comment here um, explains what the problem is with the, with the Toilet Boy. It says, um, what do you call it here? Um, um, that they had, uh, this toilet boy had a video and it was deleted and um, he spoke something about the Virgin Mary denying her virginity, yes, or bringing up the topic that could lead to the denial of the virginity and um, he seems to have some um, speaking about Islam and prayers. Ah, this is an interesting comment. Um, what do you call it? Yes, um, you've been flushed down the toilet. Yes. Um, so the toilet boy was flushed down the toilet. Yeah, his name is I B N N U H and three numbers. Um, here That's is interesting another interesting because this particular comment I hadn't even seen actually. All right. Mm -hmm. Ah, um, I don't need your prayers. Looks like your need of guidance or something. Remember what you said about Mary's virginity in the video, and you've been flushed down the toilet. So the toilet boy has been flushed um yeah um let's just see ah and there's um, um there's um, another interesting comment here um yes um to do with the same person this ib nana uh yes 189 make bold and categoric claims yeah um claiming that they are um you know something uh, some expert on the quran um, probably from a Muslim background, this 189 toilet boy. Right, so yes. this, this particular comment I had seen, and of course it's a, a very interesting idea, this idea that the Quran or that the words in Arabic somehow have a self-contained meaning. Maybe you can say uh, something about this. I mean, Claire here also ah, commented... Let's go to the Quranic... ...about the dictionaries, uh, um, but maybe it's interesting yes. even just to understand the structure of how Arabic is in the Quran. Uh, um, yes. If there's any merit to what he's saying, or because I really don't know about it. Ah, um, the thing is, um, these are, uh, this is a very serious topic because um, the thing is, um, I'll show you more example of um, what the people say about this toilet boy. Um, he seems to be claiming to defend the integrity of Quranic verses, um, this person says, by believing that all non-Muslims are destined for hell. Your views which were shared in a group Ah, so he's in a group, and oh, he claims to have his own interpretation of the Quran, probably some Islamist modern version. Um, well, it's strange because the Quran is supposed to say that the Virgin Mary um, is a virgin, but um, he seems to have expressed. Hello, yes, he yes, seems yes. to have expressed some views whereby which show that um, you know uh, um, something to do with he's in denial of this yes and um so obviously many people would have been upset but um let's imagine that this is the middle ages right now yes and um um somebody in europe is um <laughs> denying the virginity of europe and um imagine there is a city um in um during the middle ages and um let's let's imagine let's let, let, let's just say, for, for instance, the Crusades, they were fighting over Jerusalem. So it looks like, let's say there was a city called Toilet City. Yeah, I'm just typing it out. And, um, yes, and the thing is, people are um, fighting over Toilet City. It looks like Toilet City is outnumbered 
and um, the Crusaders would have said, "You've denied the virginity of um, uh, of of Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, and Toilet City would be wiped out." So let's see if Toilet City has anything to stand on. Yes, because Toilet City, um, oh, the Toilet Boy has made um interesting comments. Like, um, let me send you about um his claims or um comments. Yes, um that um sound um sound um in intellectual to anybody who's not um exactly educated um whereby he's um got comments here um regarding language and many other things have you noticed this yes i noticed the comments regarding the supposed structure of arabic within the quran ah, uh, and that it's yes. supposedly somehow self-contained and one thing while i was reading through this and like you know reading a little bit of the back and forth comments I was actually laughing at myself. I was like, wow, it's almost, and please, everyone, I mean this, you know, halfway as a joke, but halfway, I actually mean it. I'm almost a perfect product of the Jesuit brainwash of Europe because I'm secularized to such an extent that I don't even have a horse, uh, you know, in the game or in the race in yeah. terms of the virginity I'm, I'm, or I'm, something. So I'm just like observing this and it's very, yes. in, yeah, very yeah. interesting yeah, to me. Um, I, I'm... I'm just um, trying to find the comment on um, what do you call it of the vocabulary, yes, um, of this person who brought up the topic of um, denying the virginity. Um, I'm not sure what sh I should call him, the toilet boy, or should I call? Ah, uh, somebody here calls him Mr. Nobody um, or Mr. Rubbish. <laughs> but um, the thing is. Um, um, this is what they've called him. Let's see um, if he's got a genuine point, or are these people uh, um, maybe these people are wrong to actually um, um, to talk about him like this. Maybe he's got a genuine point, and maybe he is an expert on Arabic, or he's deliberately spreading lies. Yes. So um, the thing is, he mentions Hebrew Quran, he mentions Kabbalah and Kaaba and Allah, and he tries to. Um, Let's see, and um, what do you call, what do you call it here? Let's just go through a few more, show more replies. Let's see, um, yeah. Um, uh, it says he talks very loud. And um, somebody's written another person said he's arrogant, Mr. Arrogant, Mr. Loud. Oh, oh, this is interesting. You are not a native speaker of Arabic, so why should anyone believe you? Oh, by the way, so this person is making comments. And then um, they they don't um, well this Mr. Toilet who you know brought up the subject of denying the virginity yes um, let's see what he himself says about himself he says I'm not asking you to believe in or not to believe in anything especially from me um, so why would uh, Mr. Toilet comment if he's saying <laughs> believe what I say. Oh, don't believe anything that I say, especially from me. Oh, uh, and then he says we have all the roots preserved in Arabic. Is right. this, this so? Is, this is the this would be the argument. That's I mean that's what I found an interesting idea, but I have no clue because I have don't know about Arabic, so I can't uh, say. Let me just re repeat that so that I don't forget. He said we. Who the hell is we? Does he claim he's speaking on behalf of many people, or is he speaking for himself? yeah um have the roots of the arabic language and then um let's see what else ah yes he gives lots of quotes here i found it here yeah i think you have to open up all the messages and he's trying to make comparison of words roots or whatever god knows yeah yeah um but um, anybody who actually knows history and can go through it will know it's just clear garbage yeah this is just clear garbage yeah yeah and um, what, do you, what do you call it? It's clear garbage. Yeah, that he's trying to compare or, or trying to show some words and he's trying to show, hey, I know the meaning. And somebody else says, um, your interpretation is not final. Yes? Somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it means that um, people don't believe him or somebody else knows, probably. Yes, but um, let's have a look, look at look at this. Oh, somebody asked, ah, he seems to have a video and it says, why has your video been deleted? Yeah, if you're truly 
contained well-founded information. Yeah, oh, another um, toilet boy right at the bottom. Okay, let's go through this, what the toilet boy is saying. Now, this is going to be very shocking information. Yes, um, now this is going to be very shocking information. Like, for example, in the last video, um, what we spoke about, um, um, for example, well, let me just show an example of a, the, of a word in the Quran. Here is a word in the Quran. Um, yes, pronounce it how you want because there's different pronunciations. Chinese pronunciation, um, North Russian Tatar pronunciation, South Russian Chech Chechen pronunciation. There's um, Chinese pronunciation, Indonesian, um, you know, etc. So there's the word illumin, you know, like the illuminati or the knowledgeable. Yes. This is one word. Now, somebody is going to say this is a Latin word. Another person will say it's Germanic. Another person will say it's Arabic. But of course, as if anybody who knows wiser will realize, oh, it's an international word. Yeah. So um, the thing is, um, it's an international word and people have different pronunciations. Like, for example, it's well known throughout the world that the Chinese pronounce in one way. Yeah, the Ar Arabs pronounce in another way. The Americans pronounce in another way. So people in the world pronounce in another way. Well, anyway, in the last video, I pointed out, for example, there is a word here. Yes, um, I pronounced um, th um, the word that is matahum or matane or matana or matahum or yamatona or things like this. Yes. Right. This was so the, now, uh, the thing you mentioned last time, where it is the question about the whether it's about provisions or about here enjoyment. Just exactly this ah, yes. the question. And mm -hmm. um, or, or does it mean we made or we gave? So now the thing is, people are going to try to translate this using classical Arabic dictionaries. Yes, and modern um, modern classical Arabic, um, an updated version is known as standard Arabic, which um, um, you know many media channels use but then um, let's go through here um people will say this is a shia translation of um that same verse and it will say what do you call it we gave it will say we gave pronunciation or prolonged their lives or but anyway um it says we gave so now let's have a look at um, many people like let um the word matane or let's say the word um because yeah because Yes. Now, off the top of your head, you can spell it in different ways. But um, from the, the sound of my voice, don't forget, um, not everybody uses the Anglo-Saxon alphabet. Yes, or the Latin alphabet. So now the word because, how many roots does it have? I wouldn't be able to say, honestly. Yeah, some people will say it's got two roots. Well, you can even say one because some people will say argue two and say B and then cause. Another person will say, no, 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 it's Beck and then Osse. Yes. And somebody else will say it's got three roots, B, cause. So now roots is debatable. So now this, this person claims they know the word, the roots. It's up to you to define it, whoever the scholar is. Now, in different Arabic countries, you know, there's many, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, um, Palestine, Jordan, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, Yemen, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Sudan. So as, a, as we can see, there's many. So now the word matana, yes, um, it could have mataona, or it could be mat and tana. Or it could be, um, what do you call it, matana. Or it could be, um, you know, yeah, so as you can see, does it have three roots, one root, or two? This is up to you. And now the definition of roots differs according to different um, scholars. Yes. Now, for example, now I will show you how words can be played with in the English language, in common English. Yeah. Now, here is um, somebody saying, I got the shopping out of the car. I got. Now here, that means something like I, um, I, I took and I carried. Now here is somebody who's saying, I got the money. Do you, have you got the money? I got the money. Does this mean you're carrying it or bringing it? Right. Or does this mean I got the money in my bank? Um, can you afford it? Yeah, I can afford it. I got the money. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So this this um, could be a different meaning. Then there is another meaning here. Yes. So these people who are trying to define roots are liars because in every language we have the same situation. Then somebody says, I got out of bed. Did you get it out of bed <laughs> or did you get out? <laughs> yes. I, got, I got my so, cash out of the bed. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. <laughs> so now the thing is, the thing is, when people study languages and roots, anybody who claims to be an expert and saying this is what the root means, liar. So Mr. Toilet, yeah. Oh, I don't want to refer oh, to him as specifically. Doesn't necessarily many... have to be mean liar. It can just mean that people are not, you know, aware of this aspect. That this some is... people are not aware, but um, the thing is, when you're claiming, um, you know, putting messages there, um, you know, things like. Um, saying I've interpreted the Quran and um, I think or I believe it's seeming or hinting or showing that the Virgin Mary is not a virgin, but the Quran, um, I'll go through it in a minute, it seems to be quite pretty clear that um, the Virgin Mary is a virgin or otherwise the Muslims would have known this in the last 500 years or let's even say a thousand years without the fake history. Yes. Um, uh, so the thing is, um, you know, it, it's almost mysterious that um, the Muslims who are reading this day and night, they seem to have not noticed this. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's go through this Arabic language. Yes. And um, w uh, and um, this is going to be like um, a big shock to you. Yes. Um, the Arabic language that, that um, well, here, then um, you can read it out. Um, the Arabic language as the language of the new knowledge, it was the main language of the Middle Ages. Yes. Same like today, English has become the lingua franca mm -hmm. uh, for most of the world today. Arabic as the language, it was the language of the Middle Ages, not the Arabic they speak today, not even the classical Arabic that we're told about today. This history is a fraud, but the language of the Quran. Mm -hmm. So this means the Quran must have been a very important and big global book around the world right yes and it must have been very important to pick up this language um um what did i just say yes um it must have been important to learn it and this means people must have been connected to this quran somehow if it was the you know global language of the middle ages and uh, this is well known that you that um you can't hide it yeah let me um send you more that um um that um the certain histories that you can lie about and delete but um the thing is um Arabic was the international communication language of the Middle Ages for a thousand years. This is the 1000 years that people are talking about that um, they call the Dark Ages or the deleted and they've invented the history. Why was it Arabic? Now, this is not normal Arabic. So now the Arabic Quran has only got four, about four or five hundred root words. But now let's let's see what uh, many people talk about Arabic today. And this is going to shock you. Yeah. This is common information. You'll find millions of posts um, on the Internet. Why you shouldn't learn modern standard Arabic. Oh, by the way, modern standard Arabic is actually based on the Quran. But we'll go through this in a minute. Um, what do you call it? It's not a complete waste, but um, what do you call it? Yeah. People say don't study it. We'll go through it in a minute. Yeah. But what are the alternatives? People are saying it's a waste of time in the next one and read it. Yeah, that many people who studied it found that it's basically useless. Yeah, and um, here's um, people who are actually giving advice to people and they're saying, um, hey, um, here is um, one advice. And what do they say? If I had the chance to start over again, you know, many years I wasted. Yeah, choose an Arabic dialect. Yeah, because basically, yeah, simply most Arabs don't speak this um, standard arabic or classical arabic in fact the this ones is, who didn't go this to is school very interesting maybe also historically because i mean of course you mentioned the idea that many of the modern languages may even be much more modern than we think but even here whether it's in the uk whether it's in austria or germany or anywhere probably also where you live most people still have local dialects in their counties and they speak in a different yeah. way and it's they only learn sort of, how to properly speak if they go to school. Like this. Believe it or not, it's nothing like this. For example, if you went to Morocco, the national language that the people speak, I've seen it myself, has got nothing to do with Arabic at all. 
when you go to Algeria, it's a totally different language. And within those places, they've got their dialects, but the national language is totally something else. I'm being serious to you. It's actually another language. And they're uh -huh. lying to say it's connected to the classical Arabic language, which is a total lie. Yes, because the classical Arabic language that they're showing us is a fraud. There was another classical Arabic. The original true classical Arabic was in the Middle Ages. Now, I'm going to go through this in a minute and you'll be shocked. Like Egyptian Arabic, it's a total full language. It's a full language. It's bigger than the number of people who are, let's say, who are speaking um, Italian. It's a bigger mm -hmm. language. It's a national language. But no, they're going to say the national language is Arabic. But then, so the thing is, let's go through this. Um, yeah, you'll be shocked. It's nothing to do with these dialects. We're talking about entire countries here. Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, yes, Syria, Iraq. So now modern standard Arabic, though despite its name, is based entirely on blah, blah, blah. It says, by far in this project was wasting my time on modern standard Arabic materials. Yeah, if you want to learn Arabic, the next comment, become fluent in it, then learning modern standard Arabic is a waste of time. This is from the Al Dirasa Institute or something. But why waste time and money? Yes, so many people um, study it because of the Quran. Um, there's, there's many um, posts and blogs. You'll just find it and it repeats. Yeah. So now what is even worse? Yeah, we all know that Hebrew, they say it was a dead language and it was spoken a thousand years right. ago. But we know but we know that this was a fraud we can't seem to find its existence at all and and we know that hebrew was taken from arabic but we know that um, the major the worldwide jews were speaking some type of arabic all over the world and we know that classical arabic yes and um, or quranic arabic original classical arabic was the actual global language of communication where is this language it doesn't seem to be in the Middle East. And now this is going to be shocking. Yes. Now, the shocking thing is, yes, believe it or not, um, these are from Arabic websites, yes, or where Arabs um, communicate a lot, Arabic tripod. Formal Arabic is live largely, this is formal, what the governments use and on television, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they're teaching this in school. They're trying in the last 50 yes. years. Uh, um, is, is, is derived, made from the classical Arabic of the Quran, that was spoken a thousand years ago. Huh? Excuse me. This is the same story we get for yeah. um, Greek. Spoken two thousand years ago, it disappeared. Latin disappeared um, one and a half thousand years ago. Hebrew disappeared two thousand years ago, and now they're telling us Arabic disappeared a thousand years ago. But how could it have disappeared a thousand years ago if it was being used by Jews until the 17th, 18th, 19th century, mm -hmm. um, the large uh, majority of them? And also it was used in the Middle Ages until the 16th um, century and even in Russia up until the 17th, 18th centuries. So this means there's something wrong. Let's see what is wrong. Yes. So now when we investigate, yeah, um, yeah, um, um, let's see what... Um, even in Israel now, because um, um, many Jewish people have started to study Arabic because hoping there's going to be a union in the Middle East. Yeah. And what they've discovered is that, um, hey, in these Arab countries and their cities, it's not really one language, but it's not even dialects. It's a series of languages. There is classical Arabic, which is the modern classical full language is actually based on the Quran. Yes, it's based on the Quran. So now um, from this classical Arabic, they've invented modern standard Arabic. Yeah. So now let's go through it. Yes. And um, this is the thing that even anybody, experts, um, people are commenting on Quora because people have learned this. And, you know, in Europe, many people have studied Arabic. They got married to an Arab, things like this, and they found problems. And they say and they found that standard Arabic based on classical Arabic from the Quran is not anyone's native language. It hasn't been for around a thousand years in the Arab countries. Yeah, I actually Instead, heard Arabs this idea many years ago from a f Egyptian friend, I believe, talking about Arabic, that these languages are so different. And what I had meant in re reference to UK or Germany is that there at least usually you can still understand if you learn it a little bit, you can understand it. So it seems oh, to be related like a... to the standard version. But in the Middle East, it seems that this connection they didn't manage to make it conform yet, maybe. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Now, now when you say it like that, yeah, 
And the thing is, it's because the thing is, um, I don't want anybody to doubt what is going on here. Now, the thing is, if you're from France, yes, is it, um, is it difficult for you to learn Italian or is it more difficult to learn German? Definitely more difficult to learn German. Yes, so there is similarities between French and Italian and French and Spanish and Spanish and Italian. And yes. also French and so English the, and yeah, I mean, there's many relations. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, so now the thing is, there is a common link between those languages, but I'll go through them in a minute. Yes, yes. And, and the shocking thing is, so anyway, so um, um, uh, um, standard Arabic is not anyone's native language, hasn't been for a thousand years. Arabs speak one of these regional varieties. Now, this is very important because many people are trying to understand the Quran. And now, um, as we can see, there is a battle with this Mr. Toilet, who claims to be an expert on Arabic. And he's putting so many comments um, or something, yes, trying to convince people. Yeah, you know, either he's a deceiver, yes, deceiving people, yes, or he doesn't know. Yes, but the way he's behaving, it's almost like I know, and this is the final thing. But then um, somebody else saying, you don't know. And then he's saying, why should you believe me? <laughs> don't believe anything I say. So it sounds like somebody who's a deliberate deceiver when he's saying, hey, whether you believe in me or not, so you shouldn't. Who said you, you things like this, you know, it, it just sounds like a, a, a garbage to me. Yeah, rubbish. Somebody's already called this person Mr. Rubbish. So now um, the thing is... um. Let's see, as um, let's have a look. Yes. Now, many, many people who've investigated this, I've investigated this even through traveling. What I found is that this is the final thing, that this is um, universally accepted, that um, someone from Tunisia will find it difficult to understand somebody in Algeria just next door or even Morocco. That you can say things and they'll say, totally say something like somebody from Russia who's just arrived in Paris and, uh, and, uh, uh, and they'll say, um, and somebody will say, uh, je pas compris, je comprends pas. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I don't yes. understand you. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Um, so now the thing is, these dialects and modern standard Arabic as are described by some scholars as not mutually comprehensible. Uh, and they're actually not. So um, now the thing is, now the thing is, um, let's go through classical Arabic. Yes? Um, a bit further. And um, the thing is, what you will find, you're going to find it absolutely, totally shocking. Yes. Um, the thing is, um, wh what do you call it? Yes. Let me see now. Um, yes. Yeah, so now these Egyptians, they're speaking Egyptian, a totally different language. Yes. And then the thing is, they can't speak Arabic. Yeah, classical Arabic. Yes. It's been dead, they say, for um, 500 years or 1,000 years. So now let's see. What, what let's have, have a look at um what the hell is going on but i just want to read it it's really incredible that they use the same story with a thousand years missing i mean who could believe in any world that something gets lost yes. for a thousand years and then suddenly yes. you find it again i mean yes that's, yeah. uh, now the strange thing is how could they have understood the quran for a thousand years so uh, so it means there's some some lies were in in this history now for ancient greece we could solve this problem Yes, because we can't find it. Ancient Hebrew, we can't find it. Yes. So now let's have a look at Arabic. Yes, because um, now if we're looking for uh, um, ancient Arabic, we can't find it. So now let's have a look at when was modern standard classic Arabic invented? Whoa, modern standard classical Arabic was deliberately on purpose, uh -oh. on purpose invented in the early 19th century. And it's and all it is is a modernized version of classical Arabic that they've kept the words of the Quran and turned it into a language. Now the Quran has got four or five hundred root words, so they've added a few several thousand. Wait a minute. So now they've turned it into a language. Who said classical Arabic as a language ever existed anyway? You see. Because they don't have it, they've just invented this classical Arabic. Yes, and they've given it the name Modern Standard Arabic, and it's based on the Quran. Wait, um, where did you know where to find it from? Oh, in the same way like these, um, the created Hebrew. Bunch of guys sat down. Um, let's see who these guys were and where did they sit down and where did they invent it? This is what's used 
um, you know, in politics and on television because they're trying to make people learn this new language. Yes. So um, let's let's have a look um, more at this thing. So it was invented about 100 years before Hebrew. Yes, um, 100 years before. So now when Hebrew was invented, they used the Arabic dialects. Don't make that mistake. No, um, not just modern standard Arabic or not just the Quran. They used the actual living dialects at the time. Yes. Now, modern standard Arabic and modern written Arabic are terms used by Western linguists. But this is the official Arabic. Yeah. Arabic that they're claiming it was developed in the Arabic world. Uh, um, it, it developed. It was developing in the 19th and early 20th centuries. But it started in the early 19th century around the, the time of Napoleon Bonaparte. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it refers to spoken Arabic that approximates with this written or we, um, the spoken Arabic, which is basically the Quran. So now they're invented this language um, around the time of Napoleon Bonaparte. But Napoleon Bonaparte doesn't seem to exist. It's another long story. So now let's go through this even further. And what do we find? Yeah, we find native speakers of Arabic do not distinguish between modern standard Arabic Yes, and classical Arabic, because it uses the exact same words in the Quran. Yes, it uses those words and then they refer to it as there. Yes. And generally speaking, most scholars, yeah. most scholars distinguish between classical Arabic and modern standard Arabic. Scholars means people like me, investigators. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what do you call it? I'll tell you why we distinguish, because the Arabic Quran has got about four or five hundred words root words and um yeah and you could debate about the roots and say yeah okay the 700 800 or, or a thousand yeah um so the thing is now modern standard arabic has got thousands of words yes so people like me we will realize we should differentiate so now when they translate the quran they take advance uh, adva um examples from whatever this modern standard arabic is Yes, and they will say, claim that this was the same system used in classical Arabic a thousand years ago. This is what they'll claim when they're translating the Quran. Yes, um, uh, uh, many of these so-called scholars and translators. So now let's see um, what was going on in the Middle East in the 19th century. Yeah, um, the spread of foreign languages, especially French under European colonial rule, inspired Arabic writers and scholars in the late 19th centuries to develop th this Arabic language, to develop it more. It means they're still inventing new words. Yeah, they're still inventing new words for this modern standard Arabic language. Yes, Hebrews, Hebrews have been invented, being invented starting around the late 19th century and early 20th century at a similar time. Yes, but they're using the local dialects. And also, yes. just to be clear here, it says under European colonial rule. So this means yeah, that that's, that's so not now, a independent wait, thing. Ah, ah, mm -hmm. don't, don't bother to point this out because I'm going to shock you in a minute. What uh, um, This thing, that's why I didn't mention this. Yeah, because um, the thing is, I'm going to mention it in a big way. And you're going to think, what the what the FC UK close? <laughs> All right. French connection. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the French. Yes. So now let's see who these Arabic riders are. Oh, these now these Arabic riders and Arabs, yes, want to develop this Arabic language. Did they want to develop it or was it already ready? Did somebody already invent it for them in the early 19th century? Because these Arabic writers and scholars are writing and using this language. But it was, uh, but it was already developed in the early 19th century. So how could they write it and why did they want to further develop it and what did develop mean? So now let's go through this and this is going to be the biggest shock in the world to you. That many people don't open open the websites and, and look at um, reports and anything from university professors or anything. So now um, while they were being occupied under the Europeans, they say intellectual revival. Suddenly somebody woke up and said, hey, I'm an Arab scholar, yes? And um, the thing is, um, what they found was that the Arabic language was at a disadvantage in expressing technology or modern social words were not found. Social words could not be found in the so-called classical Arabic, uncultural words. Excuse me. 
this is supposed to be a, an old language that was global and you cannot even find it. Cultural words are social words. There's no social aspect in this. Yes. And then a problem which was usually resolved by reviving equivalent concepts from the classical literature. Let's see if there, if there was any classical literature or did the Jesuits write that too? So now what they coined or invented new Arabic terms. Now they're claiming it was under influence of Turkish usage, more like the British occupied Egypt, the, the British occupied um, Iraq. It was more like um, European. So now um, they borrowed European terms. Did they borrow it or is this a lie also? Yes. So Ferguson, whoever he is, calls this um, short of a miracle. It's a miracle. They basically invented new terms and a new language revival of a language that's been dead for 500 years. 500 years or a thousand years. But then um, we're still finding mysteriously this dead language is still being used in Russia and they're writing documents. Yes, in Russia in the 17th century. So this means that, um, what do you call it? Why was Arabic still alive in Europe in the north? But um, they're trying to revive it in the south. Something strange there. Yes. So was classical Arabic, did it exist as an Arabic language for these for these people known as the Arab people. So now, so now what happens? And then um, what do you call it? Yeah, so now um, they're still modernizing it, reforming it in the 1930s and 40s. So now let's go even further. At, at first, this sounds okay, but the biggest shock is, isn't here yet. So now um, the thing is, the results of these modernization effects was the invention of modern standard Arabic. We, it, it, it actually, it is the language of the Quran or classical Arabic, yeah, and they've made it readable and comprehensible by any Arab person who can read because all basically almost all Arabic newspapers are now in this modern standard classical simplified Arabic. That's what it is. Now, this is why anybody who's learned this modern standard Arabic, they can understand the Quran. Uh, excuse me. Oh, this is why anybody who's learned modern Hebrew can understand the Hebrew Bible. Oh, they just invented the, the meanings for these words for Hebrew. Ah, no, no, no. Um, they didn't invent the meanings for the, uh, um, for the Quran in this modern um, standard Arabic that they're claiming is from classical Arabic. Excuse me. Did they or did they not? So now modern standard Arabic MSA, yes, it um, was still not a proper st spoken language, even by 1982. Even by then, it was nobody's mother tongue. And the man who wants to talk at all times, um, um, like a book or a newspaper, is, is going to find it strange because it's not his mother tongue. Yeah. And um, it is worth noting that modern standard Arabic is exactly the same throughout all the Arabic world, except a few slight differences. Yeah. So what do you call it? Yeah, modern. Uh, yeah, it was a byproduct of European colo colonialization in the 19th century. Yes. So um, now modern standard Arabic turns up in the 19th century. Let's go through it more. Now, the worst thing is now here is the worst thing. Yeah, I, I'm going to get to the point and you're going to think I can't believe this. Yeah, um, these are these are from books that people have written big books on this. Yeah. And they've gone through uh, many records and many things. So now um, the thing is, Arabic, yeah, the, um, the media was based on European style media. And they needed this modern standard Arabic or modern classical Arabic um, to equal um, um, European media, many European words or what was in France. And um, what do you call it? Yeah, um, it, um, this modern standard Arabic, even let's say somebody Washington Sarays, yeah, he even called it in 1897. So it, it was already ready in 1897 um, in printing presses. And he called it the modern language. Nothing to do with the classical language here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at that time, yes, this language still had problems. Ungrammaticalities. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. grammaticalities. Yes, basically it means there's no proper grammar system. So, uh, so there's um, uh, no proper uh, um, nouns, verbs, anything. They're not sure. Um, the thing is, what are the root words? So all of these so-called experts like Mr. Toilet or, or this Ibn whatever. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, some people call him Igor. Yeah. He's just a liar. 
yes, pointing out, saying he, um, he's pointing out because he's said he's read my books and he's noticed Hebrew was invented from Arabic. So they've got the grammar. So now this Arabic doesn't even seem to have a grammar in 1897. And he's trying to show I've got the correct grammar and I know what the meaning of these words are. And he's trying to, you know, saying, you know, I am guiding people towards the Quran. Yes. Or is he just print, um, just um, talking bananas here? Yes. You know, in the in the Middle Ages, the Muslim crusaders as well as the Christian crusaders would have, would have uh, d uh, would have invaded Toilet City and they would have flushed it. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So linguistic innovations um, that were still continuing and they were influenced by European literature. But who are the people who are making the changes? So they were making um, new genus, genres like um, modern dramas, novels and everything, short stories. So they're writing many things down. Yes. And the biggest influence, the biggest influence um, to, um, that, that um, set the standard for modern standard Arabic and the meaning of the words and the grammar, the nouns and the pronouns came from the translation movements in Egypt. In the early 20th century, I assume. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now the thing is, it came from Egypt. So now the thing is the translation movement. So all these people who are translating the Quran should be aware of this. Or these people who are quoting Arabic words and they're trying to say, hey, it says this about the Virgin Mary or not. Like Mr. Toilet um, said, according to the Quran, um, you know, that he says or something that he denies um, um, Mary's virginity. Yes. And um, the thing is that um, God knows where he got it from, uh, you know. And um, oh, somebody sent me a message that he claims he's got connections with me and he's used my name. I don't know who Mr. Toilet is. Never met him. Don't know him. Don't want to know him. Yes, because the information he's spreading is misinformation and it's clearly a lie. Now, the reason why I'm going to clearly say it's a lie is because there's many people who've read my books and now they're, they're actually reading the Quran because it provides an alternative history source. Many people, even Fomenko pointed this out because Fomenko must have also known that the Quran provides an alternative history source. So this is why Fomenko clearly pointed out the origin of Arab history. I'll send you um, Fomenko's quotes in a minute. It's because the thing is, Fomenko and me, we're not preachers. We're talking about history here. Yes. And a lie is a lie. And um, the thing is, when we're, when we're talking about this, people's lives are at stake. Somebody is going to turn around and think, hey, um, I believe what Mr. Toilet is saying. He's he's got uh, he's got a, he's talking about the Virgin Mary. Now let's see if Mr. Toilet and all these any of his allies, yes, um, have anything to stand on. So now let let's um um uh, this is there's many reports of this. Many people you can access documents. Not only documents. People's grandparents are still alive. This is the 1930s and 40s we're talking about through the Middle East. You can go and ask the old people. So innovations were from um, European literature. And what they did was they injected new vocabulary for um, science, for social words, political concepts, many things. And it came, and let's see who did these things. The biggest influence came from the translation movements. Yes, when the European trained generation, now anybody who reads this, they're going to think, ah, the Europeans occupied these places. But how did the Europeans train these people, these so-called writers, Arab writers, who said we want to revive the Arabic language? Did they want to revive it or is this history a lie? Because these people have been trained by their European masters, um, like the French, the Vatican, the British, the Spanish, the Italians. What the hell is going on? Yes. yes. And it says... Yes. So now the um, Muslims will say we've got our great writers like um, Charles Dickens or whatever, Muhammad al muah Lihi and Muhammad Taf Tafiki al Bakra Bakri ba Bakrai Bakrai. Yeah, opposition to Western influence. Were they paid actors or is this just fake history that they're saying we're inventing a language? so that everybody will be forced to learn it, even if people have got their own dialects and differences, over a hundred dialects and differences, over a hundred in just Egypt, just in Egypt. Yeah, 
Egypt's um, got more people than France, and we've got over a hundred dialects there. Now, could you maybe give to... the the title or reference for this report? Because I'm sure some people would like to check it out. Ah, the, uh, um, at the top, it has got the file, and the thing, uh, um, the thing is, um, it's got the file. People can type it in. There's many. No, no, there's but many. not this one because have... because no, wait, this particular one is on your computer, so they can't actually look it up. <laughs> it, ah, the, but uh, shall I be honest to you? Um, the thing is, when I download them, I, I saved it because I prepared for the video. Yeah, um, because two, three days ago, like I said, um, I noticed these Mr. Toilet comments and um, he's trying to be an expert. And I was genuinely worried because there's many people in Europe and America who are actually who started to actually look at the Quran. I'm worried that um, um, these um, fraudulent Islamists like him, yes, are going to lead people towards the wrong direction. And um, the thing is, people are looking for an answer to life. And history is not a joke. People are spending thousands. And I don't want them going into something, yes, or somewhere um, that, that um, there is evidence it's fake. But let's go through this. People can find this. It's not only one document. There's hundreds. There's more. Mm -hmm. Now, when you hear this more, I've not got to the main point, then you're going to think, oh, my God, you cannot hide this history. At the moment, maybe in a hundred years' time, you can hide it. It's only been 50 years because 50 or 60, 70 years since these Muslim countries got in independence. So now, were these people who were trained by the Europeans, were they trying to kill off the original dialects? And were they trying to hide the history of, of this global Arabic that was here? Yes, during the Middle Ages for a thousand years? Or did they really, um, or was there really a classical Arabic? It looks like we can't find classical Arabic. It's dead for a thousand years. And um, the thing is, but we can find Arabic was the global lingua franca, uh, um, lingua franca just three, four hundred years ago. So this means mm -hmm. it's a contradiction. It means somebody's lying. Either it was dead mm -hmm. a thousand years ago or there was some Arabic, yes, that had nothing to do with this, um, you know, classical Arabic that they're speaking about that came from the Middle East. And this history of the Middle East is a lie. Which one is it? Let's let them um, investigate further. So there's many reports. Let's go through another one then. Like you said, um, th these PDFs. So there's more. Yes, there's too many. There's too many books. It's like um, I've read so many books. So th this is why you'll know. It took me a few minutes just to gather this. You can even check the time. And you think, God, David, you just pulled it out in a few minutes. <laughs> Egypt and Tunisia. Now, by the way, Egypt is the heart of the Arab world. Um, uh, um, for um, things like um, education and um, things like this. Everybody knows this. Yeah, Lebanon for music, things like this. And um, Mecca and Medina for the holy sites, um, the Gulf nations for the skyscrapers. Yes. Egypt and Tunisia had huge European communities. Now, this is going to shock you. Consisting of traders, craftsmen, technicians, recruited by the rulers. You mean the European rulers <laughs> for the modernization program modernization what what do you mean what were they doing most of egypt's modern schools were run and the teachers were europeans excuse me um now that we've got these arab nationalists educated um arabs and their teachers are european mm. oh by the way these teachers are teaching them classical arabic that the arabs don't even know mm -hmm. hey what the hell's going on here? Isn't this what happened in China? The Europeans went to China. This is in my book, Tadar City. This is why um, it's very important to compare it globally, because I know there is going to be Arab nationalists. One of them sent a message to me a few days ago. I had to block him from Algeria. He knows who he is. He's probably going to realize this. And the thing is, uh, he says, what about the um, 10, 12,000 um, classical Arabic books and things like this? Blah, blah, blah. I gave up. I tried to call him because I thought I'll call him and talk to him, but he wouldn't answer because um, he knew that he didn't stand a chance. So Tara City goes through an example of one entire big region in the world called China. China is as big as the Middle East. We're talking over a billion people where the Europeans set up almost every school and they're teaching Chinese, even when the Chinese didn't, didn't know this language. So wait a minute. So now we've got these Arabs and the classical Arabic is dead. And it doesn't, we can't find any existence of this classical Arabic. Yes, which they call standard Arabic today. It doesn't seem to exist. Yes. So now that the Europeans are teaching this, 
What do you have to say now, Raphael? This is the big news. That's why I said, don't bother with that PDF. Mm -hmm. There's so many of these things. The Europeans, are, how did they know this classical Arabic? It's even worse now. Who also held all senior positions on technological projects. Not only t technological projects, they're modifying all the buildings, all the mosques. Yes, they're putting classical Arabic decorations. They're modifying many buildings. Uh, I've sh shown examples of this in, um, you know, in Cairo. By the late 1870s, the European community in just Egypt was 70,000 people. Oh, don't forget, around that time, the East India Company is invading. Yeah, and Thomas Cook is paying for this. Yeah, and then there's more. Yes, it's because now many of these Muslims, they seem to think that um, this um, so-called expert ego is commented about the Kabbalah and Kaaba and Allah. Um, you know, Thomas Cook was behind the Hajj shipments coming from from the east places like iran the gulf countries and india was uh, was this holiday hajj package an, inv an invention for billions of dollars by the way it's increased to um 90 000 by um 1780 or something yes and the thing is well they were all they were the teachers even before the british got there and they're teaching arabic there what the hell's going on there's more so in Tunisia, in the, in the 19th century until 1881, 1 1.5 million Europeans are there, just in Tunisia. Yeah. Uh, um, wait, no, is it in the yeah, 19th 1. century? 1.5 million inhabitants and out of those, 40,000 yeah. Europeans. And the Europeans were 40,000. And most of these Europeans, they were teachers. Yeah, of course, they, they lived teachers. in the capital where they can, you know, construct a new social and education system. Of yeah, course. the schools, because the rest of the people were in villages and um, other things, and a lot of them were nomads. Yeah, now um, the, somebody commented, um, some nationalists saying they weren't all nomads, and he's trying to say that um, Baghdad was purely Jewish. No, I didn't say that. There's reports that there's one third Jewish, maybe more, and I've turned around and said that the modern fake versions of Islam arrived at the same time as Judaism came, and the modern fake versions of fake Christianity arri arrived around the same time. Yes, at the same time, it was a competition because it was a business. Same like now, we do know that in the... Um, um, it's like three um, competing yeah. brands, each of them not really yeah, good, yeah, and they like, make a competition. Like there's brands now, yeah, that everybody knows that um, there's brands now for um, all types of communities, single sex communities, or your sex gender communities, because it's going to be a big business. And then they're going to promote it um, for the young generation, because the more members you have, um, the more business you are going to get. It wouldn't surprise me if in a hundred years they're going if they're going to say for our gender group or our gender style whatever we believe in we are demanding a nation state <laughs> oh. yeah <laughs> well. you know like um, the german states for german speakers yes so now um now let me just show you more this is uh, it, the shockingness is not finished nowhere near you're going to think i can't believe this david Yes, it was happening all over the world. Brazil, Mexico, the same process all over the world. So, for, so now these students, after their European teachers teach them classical Arabic, which became uh, known as modern standard Arabic, guess what happened to the clever students? They were sending thousands of them to Europe. And in Europe, they continued learning. Yeah, what do you call it? Uh, and they they went into their field, you know, like your bachelors or masters, either you go into the military or you go into the science. Like military is a huge thing. Like today, um, people are going into aerospace engineering. It's to do with military engineering, other things. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Yeah. Um, the thing is, the major recipient of Muslim student missions from all over the world until the second half of the century. Yes. Um, yeah, and between then it was, um, what do you call it? Yeah, they went to France. Why are they going to France? Yeah, they're going to say it's the brainchild of Muhammad Ali, um, who came to power in 1905, 1805. Yes, in um, Egypt, but the history, his history is a forgery. They're just saying this because they don't want people to know. French army advisor, Suleiman Pasha, or whatever, um, Muhammad Ali's um, French uh, 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 um army advisor but anyway the first contingent was con yeah when they came in 1805 or around then 62 students but soon there was hundreds all the elites went there 
all the elites like uh, Muhammad Ali's sons, Ali Mubarak, Hussein and Halim and Ibrahim Pasha's sons, and um, uh, um, Khadiv Ismail, all of them. We're talking all the upper class. Basically, everybody's going to France, Italy, England, and um, the German states were, were still talking this Otto the Great or Ottoman Empire uh, um, existed. At the same time, yeah, it was a similar thing. When they say the Ottomans followed, that we're talking from Germany, Austria, Hungary, and um, from Turkey, that they are going to Paris. Now, um, and the thing is, um, the French Ministry of Education. So now uh, um, the thing is, first they're getting, they're getting taught in junior schools, high schools, yes, by the French. And then they're continuing their Arabic studies and everything else in France. What the hell is going on? And then when we look at the state of, um, you know, education in Egypt at the time, there's fake photographs like this. Do you see them? Mm -hmm. You'll find pictures of Al Azhar Mosque, and people will show one or two pictures showing that the Arabs are studying. But these pictures are just a joke. Yes. Um, so now the thing is, um, um, the thing is, who does it look like invented? this modern classical Arabic language. I mean, the locals didn't know it and they're going to schools with French teachers, English teachers, German teachers who were teaching them. Where do you think this modern classical Arabic was invented? Well, again, in Europe by some Paris. Jesuits. <laughs> Paris. Now, now the thing- And just that, let me um, just briefly mention, because this is something that's commonly yeah. known also, just as another example, for, uh, also Romania has these very strange ties with France for a long time it's you know? not just romania i know there Actually, must be many we'll countries like that time. i'm glad you mm -hmm. mentioned romania because next time we're going to go through yes what really happened with the french invasion of moscow or the city of the mosque yes and um, the french why the russian elite everybody spoke french tolstoy and many of them there were base, uh, many writings um, to do with french and everything almost as if these people didn't exist we'll go through that mm -hmm. uh, poland uh, everybody in poland the elites were speaking french and many people don't know this in the 19th century so now um, the thing is al ha for the positions of imam and um, the thing is italian colonial rule and the muslim elites in libya they were all going uh, many of them went to um what do you call it, um, Italy. So now let's go through al Azhar, the major institution. Now, because many Muslims are going to insist. Yeah, um, who is this guy? Yeah, um, what do you call it, 1849 to 1905. He began teaching advanced students Islamic texts. Yes, this is um, Islamic texts. And um, he's the, um, what is he, the Grand Mufti of Egypt. Yeah. Um, as you can see, and um, he joined Freemasonry. He was in these Masonic lodges that the Europeans opened up. Oh, uh, oh it even says Europeans... on the page, I was like, where is this? Okay, but you even marked it, yeah, okay. Yeah, wow. mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so now um, the thing is, who wrote these texts when the Egyptians themselves couldn't even speak Arabic? When you see photographs of many of these people that um, many people will say, um, let's have a look. He was also made a professor of history at Darul Ulum the following year and of Arabic language literature. Yes. And he was a champion of the press. All, all the printing machines came from Europe. Yeah. And he wrote politically. Oh, wait, it's the European occupiers. It's their machines. They brought the paper. They're printing it. They're paying for all the... Yeah, he's obviously their Did agent. Did he really write anything? Rubbish. Mm -hmm. Everything everything was by the Jesuits and their colonial allies. Now, when they went to Paris, this is very important. Now, the thing is, many people don't know. Same like there was the young Turks, there was the young Moroccans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the thing is these Masonic lodges and um, the young Italians known as the Carabinieri. Yes, they had the young Egypt society. Yes, it's because I will give you an example now. Imagine if, you, if um, Austria invades Hungary, how long are they going to rule Hungary for? So what you do, you will you'll stay for 50 years or 100 years. You'll you'll find some people who are poor. You'll you'll train them as elites and the, and their families, hundreds of families. So then you'll be guaranteed and you'll say, I'm going to leave you in power. Mm -hmm. You get you get funny. I've trained other people. They're going to uh, they're going to get rid of you. So the opposition, we've trained them, too. This is what they mm -hmm. did. It, it's a great system. But so honestly, now, it um, seems this, this is what they did in every country you know i mean i don't think yes. there's any exception to this so now so now um um this um grand mufti of egypt um you know 
um, uh, leaders of Al Azhar and all these Islamic schools in Egypt, you know, this man who's in masonry. Let's look more at um, these Darul Ulum schools. So now, the Darul Ulum school was the only government civil uh, uh, government um, trade. Um, um, government civil school training teachers um, between 18, um, uh, 1870s and up till independence time or something. And let's have a look. Khedive Ismail. France hosted over half of the official missions of all these teacher trainings. The teachers who were getting trained to teach in Egypt. Wait a minute. First, they're going to schools in Egypt and they're learning classical Arabic and standard Arabic from Europeans, then they're going to learn to become teachers and they're going to France. Um, and they're coming back and they're teaching this Arabic from France and other places. France had over half, but um, in other European cities, why did Europe seem to have all these experts who knew Arabic at the time in the 19th century? Isn't this strange? Yes. So now let's have a, have a look. So what is the Darul Ulum? Many Muslims will know what is this Darul Ulum. Yes. It's, uh, um, yes. And um, the thing is, anyway, yes. Hybrid school founded in, to train teachers from top religious schools to teach primary schools. They're preparing the future. So the system started in 1872. It didn't materialize until the 1950s. It took a long time. Egypt's a big poor country. So wait a minute. Darul Ulum, Egyptian university established to train teachers of modern subjects, a mixture of religious and secular subjects. Um, who, could have, who could have established this and who were the teachers anyway? Europeans. Excuse mm -hmm. me. And what is this? To train students from top religious schools such as Al-Azhar. We've got Europeans who are treat, training Muslim students from Muslim schools, from the Muslim great university of Allah of Al Azhar to teach in primary schools. What type of Islam were they teaching as well now? Mm -hmm. This is getting suspicious now. So now they're learning from the Europeans and now they're teaching this modern version of Islam, which has now become global. Yes, Sunni Islam. What the hell is going on here? Are you beginning to see what I'm getting at? Yes. Right. Yes. So so now the thing is, um, now, um, what do you call it? Many people are going to be worried now. So how can we find this classic, classical Arabic of the Quran? Yes. Now the classical Arabic, let's go back in history now. And what we are going to find, I've mentioned this in other videos, but um, I'll just bring it up again today. Because now the thing is, um, we can't seem to find classical Arabic language. Doesn't seem to exist. It's disappeared. Oh, by the way, all these students who went to France, yeah, to Paris, yes, um, Paris. Many people don't know, but when Istanbul collapsed and the Vatican got thrown out and they invaded um, Europe, they invaded from the south. These people from Par Paris, uh, um, from um, Italy, yes. Many people don't know that Paris was known as the new Jerusalem. Yes, at that time, 16th, 17th, 18th century, even in the 19th century, this was the new Jerusalem. Yes, so um, let me just send it to you. Yes, so um, the thing is, um, many of these students who went, yeah, you can't find um, Paris in many front maps, it's actually Ile de France. Yes, you'll notice this, that um, right. Paris cannot be found in many maps, it's just a small village. Is because this was the new Jerusalem. Yes, this was the new Jerusalem. So they're coming from all over the world. Yes. And so the story of Napoleon Bonaparte is another big line. Yes. Um, and the thing is, um, the thing is, so now we can't find classical Arabic. Yes. So now the thing is, well, did class classical Arabic didn't even seem to exist. So what is this classical Arabic that was the global language during the Middle Ages? What is it? It's very worrying. Yes, it's it's um, very worrying. So now, how can we find out? Yeah, if the, if another type of classical Arabic actually existed, but not in the Middle East. Yes, and um, what we're going to find, yes, is this what um, nobody seems to talk about. 
Yes. So the answer is actually in Europe. Yes. Classical Arabic was the global language and it was being studied throughout Europe. Yes. And the thing is, um, what we're going to find is um, everybody knows this, that um, I'm just going to going to show it as an example here again, is that um, millions of Arabic coins were found throughout Europe during the Middle Ages. Yes. And everybody knows this. Yes. Um, but um, let me just um, send it you again. Yes. That um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, the so-called whoever these Jewish people were in Europe during the Middle Ages, they even spoke Arabic. In fact, when the Vatican invaded South Italy from um, from Egypt, they turned around and said there was Greek colonies or something in South Italy. But um, South Italy, the dominant um, the dominant um, discoveries of um, relics and artifacts that they find are one of the most dominant is actually in Arabic and they they claim it's coin Greek but um, it's actually in uh, in Arabic yeah like so now um it, this is in my book um Jerusalem is in Europe yeah the Arabic coins were basically the global currency not only the global language so now we found a, 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 um, there's millions of Arabic coins all around the world in gold and in silver that um, you can't forge them because they're in gold. That just in Northern Europe alone, that um, you know there were hundreds of millions of um, um, Arabic coins being imported in the 10th century, 11th century, 13th century. They claimed they were imported, or were they actually European coins? Mm -hmm. Is Arabic, classical Arabic, a European language? Now the place to look at the heart of classical Arabic is actually the Quran. So the thing is, um, what many scholars did, this is very well known information. Yes. And uh, many translators of the Quran actually do this. So this is why um, 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 about 80, 90 percent of the Quran translations of the Quran in some of them, 90 percent is OK, 80 percent is OK, but 10 percent yeah, is just a total blatant forgery. Yes. In the translation. So. Um, the thing is, this is why I've warned people to be careful, especially with these people who are claiming to be Arabic experts, like um, this Mr. Toilet, who claims he knows the Quran, and then he says, according to, to what he sees in the Quran, that the Virgin Mary is not a virgin. But um, I'll go through that in a minute. Um, so the thing is, it's because I don't want people to trust any of these Islamists, you know, because um, we're claiming people are going to hell There's, and um, things like that. There's no evidence of these things even even in the Quran or anywhere. I have not found it myself. But um, let me just um, find that thing about um, cl um, the classical Arabic. So now last time I showed you the verse Matan. So let's go back to that again. And then you're going to have the biggest shock in your life. Yes. So now um, Arabic words, what you can do is um, here. Now this is a sentence from the Quran. Yes. And um, oh, Mr. Toilet is going to claim it's it's um, classical Arabic and it's been in, in the Middle East for centuries. Well, he can dream on. Yes. Um, now let's have a look at Northern Europe. So now when we come to Northern Europe, what we are going to find is that these Arabic, so-called Arabic words are found in, um, what do you call it? Yes. In Germanic languages like Dutch, German or English. So now this word matana means we made, we gave or we provided. Yes. Even you're going to have the biggest shot because you yourself know German. And um, what do you see here? Uh, this is Dutch, machten. Yes. What is machen, we made? Machen, machen, machen in German. Yeah. In German. That was machen machen yeah. and machten. Mm -hmm. This is an, um, uh, as you know, as you will notice, German, machen. These are modern languages. They've been modified. Yes. And in Dutch, machten. And then um, what do you call it in English? Made. Yeah. So now the word, when it says, um, mat tana yeah you can see it just from germanic languages we found it's the same word with the same meaning mat tana we made we made for these people excuse me what the hell is going on here so was classical arabic a germanic language or was it from the middle east we can't seem to find it in the middle east you see yes so um, that, that's just one word. You can go through hundreds of words. In fact, I might as well complete the whole sentence. I'm trying to find the pages. Um, I thought I had them ready, but um, I, 
don't seem to have it ready. Um, let's see. Mm, I thought I actually had it ready. Yeah, I'll have to go through that uh, another time. But um, many people can go through the rest of the words and they will find that there is a similar thing. Yeah, let me see if I've got it ready. If not, then unfortunately. I, uh, yes, um, like for example, um, let me see. I think I found it. Uh, if I don't, then um, I apologize. Ah, uh, uh, I found the German. Yeah, and um, the German. So it's just a matter of pronunciation. Now, in the um, in this Arabic um, web page I've sent you, yes, um, it is not pronounced the same by people in Turkey or in Iran or Egypt. Some people pronounce it Machen, Machen, Matan, Madan, yeah, Madana, yes. So as you see, it's the same word we made, we gave, or uh, provided, something like this, yeah. And the thing is, um, you'll find a, a similar thing, you know. <clears throat> And um, what they call proto um, Germanic languages. Yes, um, let me send you an example of just the root words of this, um, of this um, one word. And then um, you'll notice, even in Scottish, Gaelic, I'm sending you this. Um, people can look at this themselves. Here's one. This goes through West Germanic, Scots, Low German, everything. Matan, Maitan, Matan. It's pronounced differently, as you can see. Yes? Yes? Can you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you received that page? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Raphael. Yes. Yeah. And then the thing is, um, you know, in English it's we made. So now the thing is in Arabic it's mat, matana. Yes. So the thing is now, um, when we go back to that, um, to that page, and um, let me send you the Arabic. And then um, the thing is, um, let's have a look at the other word that um, their life was made long. Yes, and it has the word, yeah, for uh, um, that their life was long, uh, extended it, the Arabic word there, what does it say? Tala. Yes? Yes, have you seen it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see it says Tala. So now uh, let's check through, in these modern Arabic languages, yeah, in many of them we won't find this word. Let's go to, you know, Germanic languages. So now we made tall or long. What do we find? Proto-Germanic, the same exact word tala means the number or the amount. Yes, in um, West Germanic proto, but let's compare it to others. Yeah, um, what do you call it? Yes, um, other things. Um, in, in some dialects, it's pronounced talo. Yes, not tala. Yes, but the thing is, or tall, tall, yes, in modern day English. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Um, let's um, go through more so that in case somebody is saying I'm making this up. Yeah. So the thing is, um, you can find um, the Quranic words. Yes. In European languages, which is very mysterious. Un Old Norse, Norwegian. Yeah. Talo or Tala means um, calculation or number. Yes. And then as we and um, as we go through, let me just see. Um, send more. Isn't there um, a word in English, English like tally that also relates to this? Tally? Yes, how long have you tallied? Yes, you're right. So now this verse turns around says that their life has it increased or uh, um, the number of years. So now because um, this this um, um, this Mr. Toilet who's trying to speak loud is saying um, these are invented translations but what we can see is that Arabic was global. Classical Arabic was global, this proof shows. Whereas this Mr. Toilet is trying to show no. Yeah, he's trying to show Arab superiority, somebody who's who's noticed that it no, that only the Arabs have this language, it's only us that we know the meanings or something, which is not entirely true. Yeah, Arabic was a global language. So now um the thing is when I turn around and said that the Quran says we made for these people, um, yes, that um, we made their years or their life longer so now you'll see the final word for them um is life life yes umaru or something like this or umeru or umar umaru something like this you can see this word yes so now let's look for this word yes um not just in europe but in um many global languages yes now the thing is because yes um the word umaru is used as a name in germanic languages and 
in um, Arabic languages, what we will notice is the same name in um, um, just spelt differently, depending um, how you spell it. Yes. Um, in in um, many Muslims will spell it and pronounce it in modern dialects because nobody uses this um, classical Arabic. Yeah. They will pronounce that word Umaru as Umer. Yes. Or Umar. Yes. It means long lived. Yes. Uh, an Arabic Hebrew Germanic word. It means flourishing or long lived. Yes, that you will even find it in German, like standard measure or the number of years. Or Ohmer. Or, yes, can you see it? Yes. You can see it? That it's become, it is survived as a name. And it's got the same meaning. So it means that people had similar names, but, um, and the things like this. So now the thing is, it shows that this was a global language and that the Arabs don't have exclusivity. They are not the only ones who can translate this Quran that we can find these words in European languages and we will find the same meaning and we can understand the Quran. Yes, that we don't need to just rely on these Jesuit dictionaries or these dictionaries of people yeah, who went to European schools or went to schools that had European teachers and they learned classical Arabic through them. Yes, just to understand. And then there is another thing in many of these dialects, because people were um, learning the Quran, many people preserved the meanings. So now the thing is, um, uh, many of these people, let me just show you an invented translation that uh, many people know this. Yeah. Um, let me just just show you that um, many, many of these Islamists try to um, um, make up their stories, trying to deny it and um, anything but um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, um, the thing is, um, um, there is um, um, some of these Quran translations say that you can beat women. Yes. Now, the thing is, this is based on their translations and their interpretations. And now their religious priests were even go getting trained in these schools. Yes. That was set up after the um, after the Europeans set up the original schools and the original training. Yeah, but um, the thing is, um, the Muslims um, will try not to talk about this. I'm not going to hide it. These translations claim, based on this new modern classical language that they're claiming that they know the words, where it says that um, um, the woman can be beaten and all these things. Is it, these translations are a fraud. And um, what do you call it? So I don't want to go too much into this matter. Yeah, or we won't be able to talk about other things. But um, let me make my final statement. Yes, these, um, these um, what do you call it, Mr. Toilet, who got flushed and other people are going to try to explain, hey, these are nouns, these are pronouns, these are words and their roots. And they'll try to confuse people with garbage. Yeah, um, so I warn people because many people are looking at the Quran as an alternative. Yeah, many people who've read my books have now gone to the Quran because the Quran seems to have the European history. We can find Quranic Arabic in European languages. Yes, I've shown several exa examples. People can, can check the entire book themselves. There's only 400 words. And um, this, uh, um, there's many reports on this, yes. So uh, the, the language of the Arabic Quran is found in global dialects and global languages. And the systems and the roots are, are different uh, uh, um, depending on how you want to classify it or the scholar, but um, the words have similar meanings. Yeah. So the thing is, um, people can find the meanings and the meanings have not been lost. And many translators do actually use them. This is actually known. Yes. Um, so the thing is, many of these, um, you know, monkeys or Mr. Toilets, um, you know, to um, whatever will try to make up their own um, inventions, but um, what we can see is clearly modern standard Arabic or these Arabic dictionaries were inventions made made by these colonialists um, from the New Jerusalem or Paris. Yes, and the Jesuits um, set up in Paris or the New Jerusalem. And um, uh, um, the thing is, um, yeah, it's just an invented language and th th it has no right to claim it explains classical Arabic because it's a fake Arabic language. Yeah. Basically, all these guys who are trying to explain the Quran are using these fake dictionaries and modern dialects. And these are nothing but, um, you know, just a fraud and they're causing a mess. Yes. That's why um, the thing is in this side of the world, we find a mess. Whereas the people over there, 
they learn this classical Arabic, but they also know the meaning of the Quran because many words are similar, but many things are not. But um, because they've not, they've been learning the Quran for as far as I know, that I can I can check up to two hundred years. Yeah, and these same dictionaries um, today, um, many people are quoting them, saying, "Hey, this is the root word. This means this. This means that." Bunch of jokers, pathetic liars. Yeah, we can't seem to find this classical Arabic in the Middle East or anywhere for 500 or 1,000 years because it basically didn't exist. Yes, Arabic was a global language. The Quran has got four, 500 root words and we're going to find more of these words. Yes, in European languages compared to anywhere else, possibly, possibly even more than these Middle Eastern places 200 years ago. Or why did they need European teachers to, to go there? Yes, to actually teach them Arabic. And then they went back and they created their Arabic nation states and everything else. So this just shows how much of a fraud it is and what is actually going on. Any questions, Raphael? Yes. Is there any indication until when? So since you just explained, it looks like so-called classical Arabic either really was lost for a thousand years or it's just an invention. So let's call it original Arabic or let's call it old world Arabic. Until when would you say was this spoken or used in Europe? And when would did okay, it stop? I, 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 okay, now to make it simple, yeah. Now I, 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 I've showed you the word Omar and I've shown you the word um, Mata. Yes, uh, let's call it classical German. It's the same language, you mm -hmm. see. And it was only it was only lost in the last two three hundred years. That's it. And then, yeah, when they and, invented... and, but then also based on this, languages like modern German, Dutch, maybe English, French yes. were derived yeah, from. All they did was they all they did was just change the handwriting. That's all they did. Yeah, in Northern Europe, they changed the currency, the writing on the coins. That's why we find all these Arabic coins throughout Northern Europe. That's why we find these stories of the Quran in Northern Europe. Yeah, the Christmas tree story, many other things. Yeah, and um, these things and um, the stories in the Bible. Yeah, and um, the way, um, you know, like um, the actual thing of um, many oppressive stories, the fightings and all these things that we find, you know, um, forcing people to do these things. And um, people say these, um, you know, oppressiveness in the Bible. This is what we see in the Islamic world today. That's why I've said, hey, this is the history of the Muslims and this is the, uh, um, from Europe. Whereas the Quran itself, most people have read it, have turned around and thought, hey, this doesn't sound anything like um, what we hear from the Middle East. But then anybody who reads the Old Testament, you know, hang this person, kill this person, slay this person. We seem to find um, this sort of um, um, thing, um, you know, in um, modern Islamist behavior, even without the CIA involvement. Yeah. Even without that, we seem to find this sort of um, thing there. So we should, and we seem to know that Coin Greek, the New Testament, was written over there. It's in that side of the world. So as you can see, it's a total fraud. But uh, uh, let me just show you how much, how dangerous this could be. Yes, and how much of a fraud this is, because uh, Mr. Toilet has got allies. He's got friends. And let me just show you. Um, um, there's, uh, there's some doctor in America. Let me just um, show you because this is going to. Um, actually actually surprise you yeah um it, his name is dr hani hani chin wait let me just see um um let me just um bring his files up yeah um i've never heard of him two three months ago people um, um mentioned him to me and they said he sounds like a truther david can you investigate him so i was polite enough uh, somebody from germany yeah because uh, somebody from germany thought um i'm going to look at the quran to um investigate um um, you know, European history, yes, because um, they found um, it's strange that um, Attila the Hun, or King Arthur is Attila the Hun, I've not made this clear before, but King Arthur is Attila the Hun, pronounced differently, but um, the story of Attila the Hun, what's it doing in the Quran, this is mysterious, oh, this uh, Mr. Toilet um, uh, uh, and um, other people, they were um, trying to explain Attila the Hun, and then uh, it got ridiculous, um, some of these comments, yeah, in some of the posts where they're saying um, Attila the Hun, um, you know, his horns were time travel machines. Oh, not only this, this Mr. Toilet is even trying to turn around and talk about the, uh, a Christian story about the cave sleepers or something. And they were with their dog and he's saying he, he, they weren't with the dog, but they slept with the dragon. 
<laughs> oh, you don't want to know these stories. I heard, I heard this story yesterday. Um, yeah, um, because there's going to be many people who are going to be listening. They will know this story and they're going to find this to be ridicu ridiculous. Yeah? Sounds like a good and, movie uh, for sure. Other than that, I can't really comment on it. Ah, oh, oh, there's a comment by this Mr. Toilet saying David contradicts himself, saying that the um, the Illuminati are the people in power, that they follow part of the Quran and the other part that they don't. Yeah, and um, the Quran, even the Quran itself, you know, um, he seems to claim that he's a guardian or follower of the Quran. He say those in whose hearts is perversity follow part of this book or something, or the uh, allegorical or or um, hidden hidden um, secrets of this book or they're looking for the hidden secrets mysteriously the quran actually mentions this yeah so it wasn't just me mentioning that um the kabbalah or the global kabbalah or illuminati yes that they follow these um hidden meanings but they reject the rest the quran itself says this now, uh, you saw that comment by uh, mr toilet saying um david said this and then he's contradicted himself actually his own quran which he says he claims he is the guardian or the defender or something yes actually says this in in um, writing itself yeah oh, but then again you know you know um yes um these type of people they make up stories themselves yeah oh yeah uh, uh, here is another one yeah when i turned on said these people you know um in the, at the top they know the history that's mentioned there and it says these people they hide or conceal um though uh, it talks about those who hide parts of this book or the history or whatever uh, and take it for a small price they eat nothing but the fire for their bellies so it talks about these people yeah you know what i mean but so but um anyway and um, the thing is let me talk about this honey itching yeah and let me show you now the quran what do you call it? There's a verse there. Um, this honey itching is famous, by the way. I didn't know. Somebody only told me today. I didn't know he was famous. I checked his videos, but I didn't know he was famous. Yeah. Um, um, and the thing is, the Quran says, your father was not a bad man, your mother not unchaste or something. And then um, the thing is, and um, it's the story of the Virgin Mary. It says that um, she, she came with a child and she pointed to the child according to the Quran. And then it's turning around and saying, how can somebody talk to a baby who's in the cradle or something? Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, um, what do you call it? Um, last time I mentioned depopulation, but I forget to say that um, the questions that I was asking were um, questions that the New World Order is asking. And they're asking these in newspapers and TV. I'll go through that later. Yeah, it's just that I just came across that now. Oh, this is what the Quran says. Yes. Yeah, the Quran says this and um, words in um, classical Arabic dictionaries, as well as compare the words to local dialects and compare it to European languages. And what you will find, yeah, um, many Muslims have been checking this for the last 10, 20 years going crazy. It's around said the Virgin Mary says, how can I have a man? And she says two things, well, no man has touched me and I have not been unchaste. So it means she, she's saying no man has touched her and she hasn't done anything. So how can she have a child? So basically, in modern terms, it means virgin. So now this um, honey itching, yeah, these videos, so many people have seen them, because now there's many people, non-Muslims who are interested in this story, was Mary a virgin or not? Well, um, you know, Mr. Toilet or the Toilet Boy, yes, um, made comments, you know, trying to say um, that um, Mary was not a virgin. Yeah, and um, many people went mad about this um, uh, about this person. But anyway, this Hani Chin, um, he's made videos and he's saying, who was Jesus' father? Was the birth miraculous? Was Mary's um, pregnancy immaculate conception? This is a big story that, because um, there's so many people in America that are um, looking at this. You know how these evangelicals are in America and the people who are atheists who are trying to defeat these evangelicals. So now this man turns around and says, that he's he's going through the Quran story and um, because many people know the biblical story. So um, this man, um, many people say um, he's making um, thousands of dollars, donations of fifty thousand dollars or one hundred thousand dollars. Oh, Raphael, shall we start this business, too? <laughs> 
he's well, making I'm happy um, for other people running the you know charades let's say <laughs> yeah but um anyway he turned around and says that um the guy called Zachariah in the bible or zach or Jack in modern languages, in the Old Testament known as Zachariah, um, he turned around and says that this guy, Zach, is um, Jesus Christ's father. This is what he claims. And he says that Mary didn't know she was pregnant, and Zachari Zachariah, or Zachariah, yeah, just died, and she was in the early stages of pregnancy. Uh, oh, wait. By the way, if you read this yourself, um, many people just listen to what he's saying. And he claims it's we, so he claims it's speaking on behalf of Muslims. So now there's many people who read my books who are going to end up going to these places. So I'm warning people, if you want to learn anything, read the books yourselves. Or there's mosques there where there's Arabic speakers. Just turn around to someone and say, open the book. You can translate it yourself. Yeah, or check through translations if you want to sit at home. Check everything yourself. I normally check everything. So now, what do you call it, yeah? So now he's claiming that um, Zachariah in the Old Testament is the father of Jesus Christ. But look at this. I've just printed the screen, made it bigger, because it says why we believe. Who the hell is we? He's a one-man mission. He's saying Zachariah died or he was killed by Bani Israel, means the children of Israel, very early during Mary's pregnancy. Yeah. And um, he bases this disappearance on biblical stories. And then he claims that... Um, I'm trying to give an interpretation from the Quran, not the Bible. Wait a minute. You're trying to say the Quran says this. The Quran doesn't mention Zachariah's death. As you'll notice, it's got today's date on and the time because I opened this up myself today. And um, because I thought I'll prepare this because um, when somebody turned around and said, this guy's making, you know, huge mega millions. You know, these new, these new, um, new age um um, movements and I didn't know that um, because America is not like Europe there's not many Muslims so when a Muslim speaks you're not going to believe it I'm uh, actually surprised many people want to know these stories they're willing to donate thousands but anyway there's many drawings not paintings because many of them are drawings and paintings too from the Middle Ages and they're very strange that many people have noticed that in these drawings and um, things it represents that when Christ was born, he was basically an adult. He looks like an adult, and many people have said it looks scary. You know about these stories, yes? I think I heard about that part, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, anyway, this guy goes on with himself. But um, the thing is, because the Quran says the story, that when he was born, he started speaking like an adult. This is the So now the story in the Quran matches these um, paintings in the Quran, Old Arabic, classical Arabic, it's actually classical German. Yes, and the thing is, I, um, the evidence shows it's got more in common with European languages and European stories, this Quran. Well, anyway, let's see what this um, Hani Ichin says. I think that, um, so Hani Ichin, Hani Achen, Aichen, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. But um, anyway, what he turned around and says is that now John the Baptist and Jesus Christ are brothers yeah he's making a big claim yeah um so now he's saying this that they're brothers yes so now um it, 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 um, it, um this is um another video so now what he does he does a lot of his explanations in his videos yes he's going to do lots of explanations i've i've, I've put this there so, so, so that people can can have a look he goes through references and meanings of root words. Have a look at this, what I've just sent you. Root words of some words, she, we, re, or sha, wa, ra. Yes, and he, and he tries to give examples of meanings. Yes, from traditional Arabic of the seventh century Arabs. What the hell is he talking about here? We've just gone through Koine Greek, Arabic words in Koine Greek. Yes, Arabic words in Germanic languages. Is this... Um, is this an actual classical, uh, uh, did this classical Arabic language actually exist in the Middle East or was it in Europe? Yes. Um, um, now have a look. Oh, I've already sent you this. Uh, no, I've sent it bigger. Traditional Arabic of the 7th century. He's using now this traditional Arabic to explain his um, theory and he's claiming, oh, this is the truth. I'm making a, I am making a big revelation to you. You must listen to me. This is the truth. 
Now, I am going to show you many things. This is going to change history. This is something that, that I'm, the Muslims have been hiding for centuries, that the Christian Vatican, who wanted to destroy the Quran, did not even notice this. But I have miraculously noticed this, and Mr. Toilet Boy also noticed this. Look at do you know what he's going to do? I checked through this myself, and um, there's many viewers who are non-Muslim. There's um, somebody from Germany, and um, many of their people that I was surprised that they're going through subtitles to understand this guy because they're shocked. Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, the brothers, the Virgin Mary, is not a virgin. This is what these people are saying. Now, so he goes through the birth story of um, John the Baptist, and he's showing that the word um, that there's a word there saying sabayan. Yes, um, a baby or a child. Yes. And the thing is, um, so during that story, we find the name Zakaria there. But now he quotes further on and saying, saying that this Sabayan, he's saying that John the Baptist is there when Christ was born. Because it's his brother. And he says, the baby who spoke, yeah, notice the bottom of this video, who spoke as a baby, if anybody, and he's saying, Nobody spoke as a baby, as the Quran claims, yes, but it was actually John the Baptist who was speaking. But, and um, the story behind this is that the Virgin Mary was accused of, um, hey, you've slept with somebody. That's where the baby came from. So now John the Baptist comes out and speaks. So now the story is settled. Jesus is the brother of, of John the Baptist, and the father is, is um, Zachariah so, um, in the Old Testament, yes? Um, so the story is solved, and and they say Mary has not done adultery or something. But the thing is, um, the story in the Quran is a um, uh, um, not only mysterious, but um, yes, the way he describes it. But um, the thing is, um, when we look at the biblical story and the simple basic meaning, then we get to something else. Now there is a strange thing here. I'm just pointing this out. Nothing to do with this conversation, but it turns out says that the person who's in the cradle or the baby who starts speaking, and this uh, word is used several times in the Quran, but it, it actually says Mehdi or Le Mehdi. Maybe it's two words, but I'm, I'm just pointing it out anyway. But anyway, in another place in the Quran, yes, when we open it up in a different chapter, um, yeah, um, this this um, Hani Achan has not um, specifically pointed out. It turned around and says that the person who was talking as a child, the miracle baby, was Jesus Christ. Where it turned around and says, oh, son of Mary, Jesus, remember my favor upon you and your mother when I supported you with the Holy Spirit and you spoke to the people in the in the cradle. Yes, and in maturity. Now here it's saying um, it's Jesus is the person. Yes in a totally different chapter, but um, I don't know if many Muslims have noticed this, so it sounds like a fraud, yes? And then he turned around and says, he claims, this. so now Jesus Christ is a baby, and he's speaking in another place in the Quran, and then he claims and turns around and says, according to his interpretation, or according to his translation, yes? I and mean, it just shows um, how um, these um, businessmen are profiting from the religions, it says, Isa or Jesus ever, ever everywhere in the Quran and he says is Jesus ever called a Nabi ne, like Nabi Leon means the lion prophets or the prophets yes Napoleon me, um, lion prophets in coin Greek yes which is Arabic also yes but um you know Mr. Toilet has turned around and said hey this is not the case because Assad means lion in modern Arabic Oh, we all know where modern Arabic came from now. Um, Mr. Toilet will not be able to answer to this. Of course, he's going to make up his own inventions. But anyway, it turns out says the Quran never says that Jesus Christ um, called the Nabi, and he says the answer is no. Yes, and he's got um, a great smile on there. This um, Mr. Achen, yeah, Itchin Achen or something. And then um, it turns around and says here. And this is Jesus Christ speaking, and it turns out says, Allah gave me, yes, um, gave me the scripture and made me a prophet, Nabi. Yes? A Nabi, mm -hmm. Nabi and plural, or something to do with that. So here it says he made him a prophet. And this is the baby Jesus Christ speaking, but he's going to say, no, that's John the Baptist speaking. Yes? Yeah? 
and, and um, the thing is, uh, yeah, let me just show you his exact words. Soon you're going to see the fraud. I'm going to um, send you a few more screenshots of this guy speaking. Yeah, so he says, the person who spoke to Miriam's community, this Nabi um, prophet, um, Napoleon, is a different word, but I'm showing an example that the same word is in Arabic, which is also in European, Napo, Nabi, yes? And he's saying it's Yahya or John the Baptist right there. And he's saying the person who sp spoke in the cradle or the pram, yes, is actually John the Baptist. He's claiming this. So I thought I'll have a look. I'll prepare this so that people can see it. So now this is from a totally different chapter. And it says here clearly, yes, on chapter five, yeah, it says, Ya Isa, O Isa, yeah, son of Mary. And as you've noticed, look at the word son, because I know this, um, you know, off the top of my head, it says, Ibina. Yes, in um, Holland, you'll say um, van, um, van Basten or, or in German, Von. Ib, Ibina, mm -hmm. Van, Bani, Van, um, like um, Otto van, van Bismarck. So it's actually a Germanic word. Yeah. And then it says, Remember my favor upon you and your mother when I strengthened you in the Holy Spirit. You spoke to the people in the cradle. Here it actually says the name. That it's actually Jesus. But in the other chapter, just because it doesn't say the name, now this Hani Chin Achen, I don't know how to pronounce his name, is claiming that no, this is referring to John the Baptist, and he was there at the birth and he spoke. And by the way, the people came over to accuse the Virgin Mary of saying, No, you're not a virgin, you just slept with somebody. And she said, No, this is a miracle. Look, that we can even speak. And Hani Ichin is saying there is no miracle there. There is nothing there. She's not a virgin. Yeah. And it was actually um, John the Baptist speaking, even if it doesn't have John the Baptist's name there. And he tries to refer it to um, um, another story, which is um, before that, um, in that chapter in the Quran. In, in every chapter of the Quran and chapter of the Bible, they have several stories. But he's saying, hey, look at this, just because I found one word here, it means it's referring to John the Baptist. It doesn't mean that at all. It's because um, in today's video, I've spoken about Mr. Toilet. This does not mean that um, every topic I spoke about was Mr. Toilet. Right now I'm speaking about Hani Aitchen, as well as Mr. Toilet, who are, who are talking about the virginity of Mary. Yes. So now um, the thing is, here we can see it says it was Jesus Christ, but um, this guy claims it wasn't. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, this guy. Um, yeah. And then he turns around and he quotes words and gives their meanings. What he does for his <laughs> explanations, he does the same thing like um, the toilet boy. Yes. And what does he do? The dictionary it was right there in front of their eyes. They want to refuse the translation. He's using these same dictionaries, too. Whereas many mm -hmm. translators are um, um, doing their best. Like, for example, um, somebody told me, saying, David, if you want, can you um, um, please speak up about the translation of Sam Garans? Somebody told me his name is pronounced Sam Garans. And they said that uh, maybe he's done a, a good work. Now, I, I checked him out um, several months ago. Um, Sam Garans, maybe, maybe it's good. Yes. And he's... Um, He's, he's um, checked um, root words, not just in Arabic, but um, in other languages too. Um, uh, and the thing is, so um, maybe it's a good one. So some people are asking me, where should they look? Maybe some Garans, Gerans. The thing is, he did mention that um, Petra is the Kaaba or the location for, for um, Muslims. Yeah. Unfortunately, maybe some Garans or some Gerans doesn't know this history is a lie. But I think, um, you know, he might have done a genuine thing. Um, translation but then again I don't know yeah um, somebody told me um, um, that um, they thought it was good because I'm saying this because I don't want people to go to you know turn towards some of these Islamics or Islamists yeah who, who have got an agenda uh, the toilet boy and um, this honey itching seem to have an agenda so he's saying the dictionary was right there in front of their eyes excuse me honey itching or honey action yeah you're supposed to be a doctor and a professional. You're making a lot of money and you've made such a big claim in history. Yes, that's caused many wars that during the Middle Ages that, um, what do you call it? If there was, if, 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 if um, you lived in Toilet City and you said, 
the Virgin Mary is not a virgin, you would have been invaded by the Vatican. You would have been wiped off the, off the face of the earth. No, okay, not just the Vatican. You would have been invaded by the Holy Roman Empire and the Turks and the Russians. They would have totally wiped you off the face of the earth. Now, you must have, have, have some better evidence instead of these dictionaries that you're pulling out. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he, he's got to produce better than that. And when we can, ah, let me just show when he's saying Yahya. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is just um, the name for John the Baptist. Now, many people say maybe it's not even John the Baptist and this is a lie. So for this man to claim that it's John the Baptist, yeah, it's such a big thing because he knows he, he's going to get these American, you know, ex-evangelicals who found the Bible a fraud and they're dying to know. Yeah? Yes. You know, and uh, 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 the, he's going to be making lots of money. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one actually, thing um, I wanted to mention, uh, because, of course, yeah. uh, you wouldn't want to use a European made and just because of common denominator, let's say Jesuit created dictionary for your Arabic or something. But there is even one particular idea where some... I forgot the exact name now, but some individuals actually claim, I think some Catholic priests or something, that Islam was invented by the Jesuits or by of the Catholics. It was. So Islam, that, Islam is a total fraud. Modern Islam. Uh, when you right, say I think, invented... I think they make the claim about old Islam, but it's just interesting that even here there is the side... Uh, old old Islam? Uh, the thing is... Well, what these people when that um i i've heard his story yes i forgot his name now when he turned around and said old islam the official historical old islam is the same one that they're following today so this historical old islam is a lie so now the thing is um the thing is let me just many people seem to forget yes the tatars have the quran and they don't speak arabic so the thing is we um we will know all the meaning of many words from there. The Uzbeks have the Quran, the Chechens have the Quran, the Bosnia, Bosnians have the Quran, up to a quarter or maybe even half of Macedonia has the Quran. One third of uh, Serbia today or 25% is still Muslim in the Sanjak province and things like that. They have the Quran and um, they know classical Arabic. Ah, by the way, yes, um, the thing is, um, yeah, I'll ask his permission next time. Yeah, um, I've got I've got a friend um, from Serbia where his grandmother spoke um, classical Arabic and it was a Slavic version and it had all the Quranic words, which is shocking. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, um, the thing is, um, he told me this and um, yeah, um, the thing is, um, I'm guessing he's probably about 40. Yes, and the thing is, so um, guessing from there, his grandmother, we're talking, this means we could trace it back to 1850 before the full implementation of this classic Islam and the dictionaries, which mm -hmm. would not have been available for somebody right. in the middle of, of um, Serbia to know this language, which is impossible. Yeah. And um, so the thing is not just there, but um, we're talking about the Uyghurs. Yes. And then um, another thing is I'll talk about China next time that the Chinese didn't know how to write this um, modern version of Arabic with the diacritics, which is different. It's a long story compared to the Arabic writing that's found in Germany, Spain, Italy, France, and all these other places. Yeah, Austria. So the thing is, um, I, I'll talk about that next time. I will totally divert because I want to go through this because in Europe, what we see Islam in Europe, we see them as a separate group now in America because there's not that many Muslims. Um, many people, yeah, of course, they hear the media is against Islam. But the thing is, um, they see Islam in a different way. Like, oh, I'll have a look at Buddhism. After this now, oh, okay, I'll have a look at Islam. Mm. Now, the thing is, if they're going to have a look, that we've got these kind of, um, you know, these um, preachers there, and they're making a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, anyway, a great miracle. It was a baby who spoke to the crowd, yeah, defending his mother, because the crowd um, turned around and accused her. Yes, so the Quran says it was a miracle, um, yeah. So now um, this Hani Chin is going to go through the Arabic roots and is going to show classifications and definitions. They all don't mean anything because this um, classical Arabic um, dictionary and the definitions, everything were invented that um, these Arabs had to go to Europe. So now um, Toilet Boy also is show, showing all these root words and everything trying to compare and everything is just talking garbage. Yes. So now...
um, this this topic, um, many um, I gave you the group um, in France. Many French researchers have studied this. Yes, um, what this global Arabic was. It was actually Quranic Arabic. And it's uh, and um, the classical Arabic that they talk about that they've invented the standard is something else. Now, many of these manuscripts in the old Arabic were burnt, many were destroyed. And um, the thing is now, the thing is um, a lot, um, we will be able to um, find a lot of this um, um, classical Arabic by going through some of these older dictionaries. Because I'll tell you one thing that the, um, the New World Order is doing right now, but they haven't bothered to finish this job off because they know nobody's going to use old German now anyway. Yes, or old Welsh or old Gaelic or old Hungarian. Even you know that, um, what do you call it? Yes, people's grandmothers in Hungary couldn't speak Hungarian. You know this, yes? yes? I, I just know that Hungarian was recently reformed and supposedly very different only 100 years ago. It's totally different. Yes, and the thing is, um, what do you call it? Yes. You will even find in the old um, Hungarian, it's similar to, you, um, similar to, you could even say, you know, many words in Dutch or even the Arabic Quran. So now the thing is, in many of the dialects in the Middle East, you're not going to find it very similar to the Arabic Quran, even though they knew the meanings. Yes, it's different from classical Arabic, even though they preserved the meanings. And what, do you want to know why they started memorizing the Arabic Quran? You've got these, teachers coming from Europe and um, right. now they're teaching some new invented classical Arabic with invented meanings they felt the Quran was under threat Islam is being thrown out of Europe can you see why they've started memorizing this book yeah yes and now in Europe as we've noticed not only in Europe but also throughout the Middle East the number of people who are memorizing the Quran is going down in the last 50 years after independence in the 60s and 70s you can mm -hmm. see Yes, um, you'll notice that less and less that you'll see in France um, 20 years ago more or 30 years ago, more people were memorizing the Quran because now the Quran is not under threat. Yes, it's not under threat. Yeah. Well, anyway, let, let's um, move on. Um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, once again, let's remind everybody. Yes. Um, so that these, this, um, you know, honey chin and these people can't make stories up. Yeah. Um, Arabic. Yes, was what you call it, the global lingua franca, same like English today. Yeah, I'm sending this again so that people remember. But anyway, yes, but um, still, yes, um, what do you call it? Yes, this honey chin tries to explain words, yes, and whatever, and use them in different places to, uh, to explain um, his thing. And he's saying the dictionary is telling us um, an act of inc intercourse or whatever. And he's trying to show that... Um, Mary is not a is not a virgin. Now the thing is, many of these words are not even found in that chapter where it turns around and says where Mary says, "No man has touched me. No man has touched me." Many people say um, because the word virgin, many people don't use it, is a common term to say. Um, what do you call it? My daughter is clean. No man has touched her. Yes. Yeah, so when uh, so this is a, supposed to be a religious book. So obviously it doesn't. Um, it, it says it. No man has touched her. Yes, and then he explains. He explains that Mary is not a virgin, and Jesus Christ is the brother of John the Baptist. What does he say? It takes two. Uh, this is just my own thinking, my own <laughs> imagination. Yes, and um, where he says, yes, did Zachariah or Mary believe in the virgin birth? And he's saying no. But miraculous pregnancy and um, I'm going to enlarge this by the way when he explains many things yes um, the thing is he tells you this is my thinking and my imagination in a similar way um, the toilet boy does similar things whereas you know Professor Fomenko when he shows history he's going to show hey this is this and um, at the end of his book he'll give references now me even in videos and in my books, I don't wait till the end. I'll give it immediately. I'm not going to take that risk because people, people's lives are at stake. Yeah. Yes, because people want to know. Yes. Um, uh, let me just show you again where he claims the Quran does not mention that John the Baptist, Baptist death or anything. He's claiming 
that, um, what do you call it, Mary was already pregnant and she was pregnant to John the Baptist and he had died just recently. Yes? Yeah? And um, this is what he tries to say. Yeah? Yeah? And right, then yeah. he says she did not necessarily know the scientific aspects of pregnancy. He claims that um, the Virgin Mary gave birth uh, to um, John the Baptist and the woman, you know, most women knows the, know the aspects of um, aspects of pregnancy. And then what he does is that he turns around and says, I'm trying to teach you true history here. Yes, and I've rejected Islamic history. Yes, um, many things. I'm going to interpret the Quran based on the truth, based on whatever. And then what he does, he quotes an early Muslim scholar, according to him, this is an early Muslim scholar called Imam Malik. Yes, which which would be a priest, I think. Imam Malik, yes, priest. Yeah, I've got this ready. Yes, and this, the word hadith means history. Anybody who looks at, according to Muslim history, this guy was one of the greatest history of Islam and hadith scholars from the 8th century. So now, wait a minute. He's quoting this guy here to justify what he's saying, according to his beliefs and his thinkings, that Mary is not a virgin. Yeah, and um, what does he say next? He says, he said, this Imam Malik has got in his in his um, manuscripts. It takes four years to give birth to a baby. That's in his book, by the way. He quotes this, and then he says, oh, it doesn't matter. But why the hell are you quoting this? And then he turns around and says that Imam Malik is a Muslim and one of the greatest scholars of Islam, according to Islam. But Imam Malik, this guy doesn't know. The Quran already tells you how long it takes to get pregnant. <laughs> Wait a minute. So now, yeah. So the Quran speaks very clearly about the du duration. So this means if Mary, um, if Imam Malik did exist, how could he make a difference and say mistakes so big and say it was four years? Unless if this Imam Malik story is a forgery. Yes. And now then... Um, Let's go go through these Islamic history. I'm just kind of sad he didn't say it would take 19 months to gestate a baby. But okay. <laughs> yeah. Ah, well, well, check this out now. Uh, um, the next thing is now check this out. According to Islamic history, Zakaria, the prophet Zakaria, died in AD 33. So now, um, the, um, this is um, from a Saudi website, but now he's going to go through Egyptian. Um, uh, um, Christian history and say Zakaria was murdered or some other history. They can't seem to make their mind up. Yeah, online Quran classes, he didn't have a natural death. So they can't make their minds up. Now he's quoting this and there's a contradiction in this history. So this history is a forgery. So now this man called, what's he called again? Hani Chin, Hani Aichin, Hani Aichin. I've forgotten how to say his name. Yeah, I'll have to check it again. Yeah, seems to be quoting history that you can't even find, that he, even modern Islamic history cannot, whatever. And then Professor Fomenko even shows its fabrications. And then the thing is, we can't seem to find this classical, classical Arabic history. Oh, now what is even worse? These Islamic history hadith books are written in classical Arabic, and we can't even seem to find this language. Never mind it got spoken a thousand years ago, but the exact formats with the nouns, pronouns, and the system and the sentences, even that, these Middle Eastern people especially didn't seem to know it, and they learnt it from European teachers. Then they continued higher education, going to Europe just to learn further things. So it's exactly the yeah. same like with ancient Greek or Latin. Yes. Yeah, it's just a total forgery. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Yeah, and then what he turns around and says that um, the Zakaria, yeah, in the Bible, um, um, in the Quran, I mean, yeah, made a prayer saying, God, um, please give me kids. Yeah, so now here it says this. And he's saying what he's done, he's shouting loud, saying that this guy called Zach, Zakaria, wants more than one kid. Therefore, Jesus Christ is the brother of John the Baptist and Mary was not a virgin. But now let me just show you what this honey itching, yeah, what he exactly says. Yeah. And um, what do you call it? Yeah. What does he exactly say? And then what do you call it? Same like what Mr. Toilet says, it's just Bullstein. Yeah. His exact words are this could mean, it could possibly mean singular, 
but it it is also the indefinite noun what noun what are you talking about yo yeah it's just invented invented meanings for nouns and everything invented definitions that these people try to talk clever yeah um him and the toilet boy another of the these other preachers who were trying to make money these muslim imams yeah and this guy i think is the an imam of a mosque or something or he used to be yeah and then they always make videos showing lots of books in the background to show we're very clever we've read all these books yeah and then he's saying a noun or indefinite noun they know that the average person who's listening doesn't have a clue what is the word <laughs> indefinite or what is a noun or a pronoun they just started or plural plural or singular plural or singular indefinite they're just chatting you know bull bullstein yeah it's Same like, like when the nasa engineer is talking or what are you saying <laughs> yeah, yeah they're just talking rubbish and then he says it could mean hey you've just invented this story yourself it doesn't even say this in the quran so this man is another liar and is making lots of money clearly a liar and um anybody in america i'm telling you be careful yes because the thing is you know um you know it's clearly he's just saying it could mean possibly mean it could it could mean that the moon is made of tomatoes tomatoes that have gone off very old ones that's why it looks a bit white that's why the moon is going to turn green one day in the <laughs> because old tomatoes turn white first then they turn green no no, no david haven't yeah. you seen the blood moons you know on certain days you can actually see the moon is red you know like a tomato oh my god so the moon's moon that means tomatoes grow on the moon that's what it could mean definitely yes thanks thanks you know what any itching could make lots of money from that um yeah um so so um now the thing is what these people do is that um and the thing is, um, now John the Baptist, let me just show you an example. Yeah. And um, the thing is, um, the, they um, twist meanings that we know the word, the word John is a popular name and um, it could mean graced by God. Yes. But um, the thing is, um, in Turkey, it's Jan. Yes. In India, it's Jan. But in Iran, it's actually John. Yes. Um, they, uh, they pronounce it today with an O. Yes. So the thing is, the name John is over there, and it could it could mean darling, yes. So the thing is, um, there's common international names, yeah. Now the thing is, we know it's the same name because in Iran it's John. In um, what do you call it? The Chinese Muslims they say John, yes. It's a, co a common thing, especially the Uyghurs. Now the thing is, in in Turkey they say John, but in Iran they say John. Like for example, I mentioned last time, many people don't know, yes. Um, Jewish people will say Shalom and the Shiites say Salom. Yes, the Turks say Salam and um, what do you call it? Many Arabs will say Salam. So the thing is, of course, you know, these Arabs, you know, s some of them, somebody mentioned Arab superiority. Yeah, somebody is going to turn around and say, I'm correct. No, you're not. Yes, it's a global thing. So the thing is, um, for the Quran anyway, they're lucky. Yes, that um, the Quran was memorized by people in Turkey and other places who knew the meaning and um, Arabic words of classical Arabic were in Turkey until they were removed and they were in um, Farsi and Iranian until they were moved. That's another long story. This is why Iran has translations of the Quran, which are 90 percent similar to the Arabic translation. So the people the jesuits and all these people failed in a program because um the quran was already global it was difficult to actually um um to forge the um translations of the quran and one thing many people will notice even though they reinvented classical arabic based on the quran you will find that even with the quran translations some of the same words that are in this modern standard arabic they'll have a different meaning yes that's because they they failed. Of course, they're going to try again. They've got Dr. Hanyichin and all these other gold diggers, um, you know, and um, the toilet boy trying to trying to um, you know do things. Yes, um, trying to get forward. Yeah. So the thing is, um, the toilet boy actually turns around and mentions um, the word Qibla or Kabbalah. Yes, the Arabic language was already here before the Quran was written. Oh, you can't write the Quran without the language already being here. Yes. Can you write a book in English if the English language isn't already here? I'd have a hard time or I'd have to invent a new language. Yes. So now the thing is, in the Quran, it turned around and says the word Qibla. Yes. 
And uh, many people will say it's the direction of prayer. Many people, some will say it's the direction um, towards the Kaaba or the direction to pray towards Allah. Yes. And the Quran says that um, what do you call it? people were turning their, their face towards heaven and we will make you turn in prayer or direction or something. So the thing and the thing is the word Qibla already existed. Yeah, already existed. So the thing is, um, these modern Muslims or Quranists or whatever cannot claim that they've got that they've got this Arabic or Quran superiority. Like um, this is in one of the comments. Yeah, and um, somebody's commented here. I think you have a strong Arab supremacy or supremacy bias. Uh, oh, thank thank you. David backs his claims up with more sources. Yeah. Uh, Oh, look how you talk. It actually says this actually means this. Since when? Since when, Mr. Toilet Boy and Hani Itchin? Yeah. Since when are these dictionaries correct? Yeah. Millions of people's lives are at stake. Yes. Since when are your translations correct when you're claiming that the Virgin Mary is not a virgin or you're bringing these topics up? Mr. Toilet Boy, what do you have to say about this now? Mr. Hani Itchin, what do you have to say about this now? People are paying you money, Mr. Honey, or Itchin or whatever, yeah? It says, um, what do you, oh yeah, somebody else is saying it's with an ego, conjecture. If you spoke, the, uh, ah yeah, if he spoke the truth, why has your video been deleted? Yeah, did he make a video or something? Yeah, and he's made a video with some people and it got deleted. Anyway, how long have we been talking so far, Raphael? We are now just over two hours. Okay. Yeah, I think we should leave it at that. Um, yeah, if there's any other issues, um, people leave comments. Or toilet boy, don't bother. Don't know you. Don't want to know you. Yes, um, because you're misleading people. Yes, and the thing is, yeah, you're free to talk, but then many people don't want you there. If you want to delete him, Raphael, don't even bother. He's going to make new accounts anyway. You know what these losers and time wasters do. Well, They've unless unless do. someone is, you know blatantly you know using language that is inappropriate or something i do not plan to censor anything you know i don't know what youtube no, is going to do I'll no, tell you why saying, not to... no and yeah, other than uh, that it's generally good you know everyone yeah. should bring their own censor. ideas you know that, um, and should bring their own like opinions and should yeah, bring their own perspectives however then yeah. also of people course are, you and others will uh, yeah, yeah sure but then we will also simply address it if it appears relevant at all just like today yeah. and then the conversation yeah. and the exploration hopefully with yeah. an interest for truth you know will continue and that's that yeah yeah so thank you david and, um, for addressing all is, of this and the thing is i'm not going to hide it is because i'm not somebody who is a liar or something like for example um many muslims are um 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 looking at my books that's why i try to be respectful so i say the prophet muhammad um, many jewish people in israel and around the world they're looking for um history so i be respectful i say moshe the prophet moses yes i i i give the title yes and the thing is um what do you call it yes so i don't like it when somebody tries to give exclusivity saying that um, moses belongs to islam or belongs to Judaism. Moses was a global leader. Yes, and the Quran and classical Arabic that was global, it doesn't belong exclusively to the Arabs. Now, the thing is, yes, um, um, classical Arabic from the Quran, yes, um, a lot of evidence shows that it doesn't seem to have, have survived in these um, modern standard dialects that are being used there uh, um, today because they invented classical Arabic and people are, are going to school and learning it. But um, 150 years ago, the case is different. This is something else than two, 300 years ago. But classical Arabic of the Quran, I can see it not very big in, in um, Indonesia. Maybe I'm wrong, but the thing is, or um, let's say, um, you know, Zimbabwe. But what, what the evidence seems to point to is that classical Arabic and the words in the Quran are um, in Europe. And it, it was a European thing because Europeans were studying this language. These manuscripts and the inquisitions were happening in Europe. It happened in the Middle East later. It, and the wars and the crusades were in Europe. Mm -hmm. this, this is what I can see. Yes. Um, Fomenko himself even says, um, what do you call it? Yes, Arabic was spoken alongside the dialects, right beside it, side by side. Yes. And this classical Arabic in the Quran only had several hundred words. So... 
this is the end thing. But anyway, I advise people to be careful. Yes, yeah, stay away from these groups and um, any of these crazy things. Yeah, if you've got any doubts, there's um, there's Muslims everywhere. And um, the thing is, you can check online and uh, anything just to confirm anything. You'll find Arabic speakers in the mosques because the ones in the mosques, they read the Quran. So that's why I've said to go there instead of somebody on the street. Yeah, um, because in the mosque, um, people who read it and just tell them to give you direct translations. And I'm not going to hide it. It's because... Um, I, I, people have noticed that people will say, David, you're not dumb or stupid. Yes, it's because one person has said he's got maybe an Islamic agenda. Yeah, I'm not, I'm going to make it clear I'm not dumb and stupid. I've noticed that I'm just off my Facebook. About a thousand people have started reading, reading the Quran just on my Facebook account in the last two or three years. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not a liar. Now somebody else is going to say, oh, he's, he's a thousand people just from his Facebook. Oh, my God, he must be a preacher or something. No, history is something serious. We're genuinely worried. Yes. And the thing is, because I noticed there's a thousand people, this is why I've spoken so strongly in this video against these people. Yes. who are trying to deceive people. Yes. And I brought up the thing about the fraud of the Arabic language. Hey, a good title would be, is, is the Arabic um, the invention of the Arabic language or Ar um, is Arabic a fraud with a question mark, something like this. That would be a good title. I'll leave hmm. it to you. All Any right. questions, Raphael? I think we're good for now. I'm sure there will be many more comments. Looking forward to all of those. You know, leave your insights, leave your questions. And then next time, you know, we can continue the exploration. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, Raphael, you have a good night. Yes. Thank you very much. I didn't David. realize how long we've been talking for. I was going to cut it off at about one and a half hours. That's fine. But, um, and we'll continue next time. There's lots to talk about. Yes. And please, everyone, as always, make up your own mind, make your own research, look into yes. these things yourselves. Yes. And, you know, That's together we shall find yeah, don't out more. Don't depend on anybody else's comments. And, um, you know, people are going out there who are giving opinions and claiming things and saying we've got translations. Yeah, the Jesuits have been there before you. The New World Order is way ahead. Yeah, that's the, the usual order. issue, it seems. Yes. <laughs> I love those right. guys, the Jesuits. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah, bye. 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 Good night.